morning. morning. How you feeling? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, we are about to get it on. We're about to change some lives. I am so proud to be here again with you. I'm Allie Braswell. I get to the honor and the privilege of being the master of ceremony. So shall we get this going? Well, let's all rise for the presentation of the colors by the Air Force Junior ROTC unit from McCoy High School. Please remain standing as the Garden Community Quartet, led by Dr. Jeff Redding, joined by Eddie Rothney, Megan Koch, and Elizabeth Bublitz, joins us to present the national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Please join me in thanking the Garden Community Quartet. Was that incredible? You know they did a good job when Sassandra Lewis, our keynote speaker, is back here nodding and bobbing and weaving with them. I'm just saying. Please join me in welcoming the Reverend Larry Dorsey for our invocation. Let us bow our heads to pray. Most gracious, our Heavenly Father, once more and again, you have allowed us to come. We have come in unity. We have come in love. We have come to remember what you orchestrated to bring your people together as one in this nation called America. God, we want to thank you for what you are doing. And we know there's still a whole lot of work to be done. But each time we come, we are making progress. Thank you for all the leaders of Akoi who did not think it was robbery to honor the late, great Martin Luther King Jr. and the legacy which he stood for. And now, Lord God, bring us more into the understanding of your purpose. Thank you for the diversity board and all of the members of the commissions of Okoye. Thank you for the children who shall be remembered and they shall know what it's all about. Blessed be the name of Jesus, for this is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, sir. Now it is a great privilege to share with you 
the chairwoman for this this event, the chairman of the Human Relations Diversity Board. And I really want her to feel your warmth and your love, Okoe, okay? So as Nicole Dawkins comes, please join me in welcoming our chairman for this year's event, Ms. Nicole Dawkins. Welcome friends and neighbors to the ninth annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Unity Parade and Celebration. Welcome to all of our elected officials and VIP guests that have chosen to spend this time celebrating with us as opposed to staying in bed watching television or anything else that might be enjoyable. We are happy to have you here with us. Uh, my name is Nicole Dawkins and I am happy to serve this year as the chairman, but I have a lot of other fellow servants that serve among me and I want to take this opportunity to recognize them. So please stand and wave as I call your name. Past Chairman Jennifer Hopkins. <laughs> Chairman-elect Ira Calloway. <laughs> Member Barbara Ann Budicane. <laughs> Member Billy Jean Daly. <laughs> Member Sandria Foster. Member Beth Freeman. <laughs> Member William Maxwell. <laughs> Member Pastor Gabriel Padilla. <laughs> Member Zane Prater. <laughs> and Member Suheli Ruiz. <laughs> After the program is over, we welcome you to stop by the HRDB table and get information about joining this board. The Human Relations Diversity Board represents the culmination of the dreams and aspirations of a movement that started as a thought, grew into a dream, and then was propelled into action. We can always stand by and complain and bicker about the changes that we wish our communities, cities, and societies would make. But there comes a day when we have to put legs on our dreams, stand up and begin to move. Moving is the only way to become a catalyst for the realization of these dreams. If you are one of those individuals who after New Year's came along, stood up, put on some legs and are ready to move, then we could use you at the HRDB. Please look for any one of the members in the blue shirts to get more information. We are so happy that you're here to honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We have a great program in store for you. Have a great time and enjoy the day. Thank you. So now that we've set protocol and we're getting ready to get going here, let's, uh, let's move right on into our next piece, which I'd like to recognize our mayor, I haven't seen him, but please, Mayor, there he is. I did see him. He was scooting that way the earlier. Please join me in welcoming our Mayor, Mayor Scott Vandergriff. I, I think the flags are on there so that we don't get run over. We've given him wheels, so he's going to be all over the place. So good to be with you again, Mayor. I'd like to recognize our City of Ocoee Commissioners, Commissioner John Grogan, Commissioner Rosemary Wilson, Commissioner Rusty Johnson, and Commissioner Joel Keller, our leaders within the Ocoee City Government. Our state representative, moving on, I'd like to rec represent, uh, Recognize our state representative, Randy Bracy, Randolph Bracy. I saw another state representative cruising through. He always hides out on me, but Representative Bruce Anton, are you still out there? Let's give him a round of applause somewhere he is. Our Orange County property appraiser, Rick Singh. Orange County Commissioner Scott Boyd. 
Orange County Commissioner Victoria Sipley. I haven't seen him, but I'm told he's here. Mayor Bruce Mountain from Eatonville, from the city of Eatonville. Our Winter Garden Commissioner, Mr. Bobby Ozuski. Former State Senator Gary Sipley. And representing the Jamaican Diaspora Southern Regional Representative Wayne Golding Jr. He brought his fan club. <laughs> I'm not mad at you. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, our Grand Marshals, uh, Mrs. Nancy Houston Dabs. And I want to make sure that we also know that our congressman was here. Congressman Daniel Webster was here. And uh, if you, you probably saw uh, Congressman Webster uh, earlier, but you know he is very busy at work. So if he's not here, that's because he's doing something somewhere else. Uh, but I also want to make sure I, I go back to our Grand Marshal, um, Mrs. Nancy Houston Dabs, the widow of our former mayor. And please, would y'all stand and just give her a, a, a rousing standing ovation for her service, her husband's service. Thank you. You know, because a lot of times our elected officials, once they get in office, we think the job stops there, but they continue serving 24-7. And a lot of times, uh, we may not take a moment to say thank you. But any time that you get a moment, please do. When you see them, please take a moment to say thank you. Uh, our United States Senator, Senator Marco Rubio, couldn't join us, but he sent a letter uh, to the city of Okoi, to the Human Relations Diversity Board. And I'd like to read that to you now. Dear friends, I'd like to welcome you and thank you for gathering to mark Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Something I've always liked about this holiday is that it isn't meant to be a day off, it's meant to be a day on. A day of service to our communities and our country. That's because today honors a man not just of great words, but of great actions. A man who labored tirelessly to expand the boundaries of freedom and opportunity. Through peace, unity, and constructive dialogue, Dr. King wielded America's strengths to confront her weaknesses. The result has been an American dream applicable to more people than ever before. Even so, the work of Dr. King remains unfinished today. The American dream continues to elude too many of our people. Americans of all backgrounds and the vestiges of racial discrimination still exist. Over this past year, we have seen tragic events in several communities result in anguish and frustration among our people. While these occurrences sometimes feel like grave setbacks, Dr. King's legacy reminds us that we can turn even the most painful tragedies into catalysts for progress. Today, our generation, like those before us, has the chance to make historic strides toward equality of opportunity, both economic and social. To do so, we must look to Dr. King's example. We must start with what unites us. Americans are a unique and special people. We are the descendants of pilgrims and exiles, of slaves and refugees. And in our vein flows the blood of men and women who refuse to accept that their futures would be determined by their past. In this country, a collection of people of every race, of every tongue, of every religion known to man, somehow did what thousands of years of human history said could not be done. They came together to build one nation under God. Ours is not a story of perfection, it is a story of progress, of sometimes slow but always steady progress toward a more perfect union. This is our past, thanks in part to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., but I believe it is also our future. So on this day of service and remembrance, I want to thank each of you for what you're doing for this community and our nation. Thank you for coming together to continue Dr. King's legacy of unity, service and advocacy for an America of justice and opportunity for all. Sincerely, Marco Rubio, United States Senator.
With that, ladies and gentlemen, we can move right on into some festivities. How's that sound? I am honored to be able to introduce this gentleman and this incredible choir again because Dr. Jeff Redding is just like family. When you think of Central Florida, we own him too. Uh, you know, he may have been to Utah and been all over Italy and been the International Director of the Year because they never ever give me his accolades, but I, I remember them. But I remember a Jeff Redding who just wanted to make sure that kids had an opportunity to sing together, come together. But there was always this group of people who were singing with him and he found a way for them to sing too. Please join me in welcoming the Garden Community Choir under the direction of Dr. Jeffrey Redding.
So as we move forward, I'd like to invite Commissioner Rusty Johnson to the microphone for just a moment to share with you something very special. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Isn't it great to be in the great, beautiful city of Okoy today? We take a lot of pleasure and a lot of uh, admiration to have everybody here. My uh, job is here to read a little note here about Mr. Dabbs' family. Mrs. Nancy Dabbs is serving as the Grand Marshal of the Martin Luther King Jr. Unity Parade in memory of the late J. Lester Dabbs Jr., former mayor and city commissioner of the city of Okoy and the charter member of the uh, Human Relations Diversity Board, one of the reasons we have that board. She is accompanied by her grandchildren, Calla, Zachary, Garrett, Jacob, Kelton, Emily, Caroline, Delaney, and McKenna. And I will also say that I've known this family all my life. And Leslie's here, the daughter, Joanna, Natalie, and Jack. Let's give them a great hand because this family is a big part of our city. I, I had the great honor of being Mr. Dabbs' student. Uh, it was hard because I wasn't the best student in the world, so it, it was a chore for him, I know. But I will tell you that Lester Dabbs is a man way ahead of, was a man way ahead of his times. He came into Okoy back when we were in the early stages of the 60s, and all of you know how that was. He brought us into where we were supposed to be and worked at it always. And let, I'll, I'll never forget, when Lester got up to speak, Mr. Dabbs would always say, unaccustomed as I am to public speaking. But believe me, folks, he could speak. And he's still speaking as we are here today. I think most of us, is, some of you from West Orange High School, Popka High School, uh, Stonewall Jackson School, Lester was a part of many of our children, many of our lives and adults. And I'll, as we go on and move on without Lester, I will always believe Lester Dabbs will be here amongst us. And I know he's here today because he's smiling wherever he's at, and I know he's in heaven looking down on us and smiling at us. So let's always remember, if you think of Okoy, think of Lester Dabbs, because he's a big part of why we have this Martin Luther King Jr. celebration. And I know this is a day for Martin Luther King, who went around the country in the United States preaching unity, but believe me, Lester Dabbs preached it all the time too, and I wanted to let you know that he's a big part of what our town is today. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. I think if you think about, I, I had the honor and privilege of meeting him, uh, Mr. Dabbs, when I first spoke at this event almost four years ago. And just to hear his heart still for unity and bringing people together, I think it would not be a dishonor to Reverend Dr. King, but just a testament to how Dr. King's message touched others. Because as the drum major went around this nation, he also crafted other drum majors. And I believe that Mr. Dabbs was a drum major in the heart of Reverend Dr. King. Let's just give him another round of applause. The next honor goes to the, an incredible young lady that is our sixth grade winner of a 2014 Black History Month essay. Would you please join me in welcoming Isis Clark. The color of freedom and justice from my perspective. I wonder how one color can deserve freedom and justice more than another. My mother said, God even makes the colors in the rainbow equal. So I say, why should people be different? Why should they be judged differently? Why should they be treated differently? Three colors from the rainbow represent freedom and justice in our country, red, white, and blue. In America, people enjoy the right to freedom and justice, but I have many questions about injustices imposed on that very freedom in the past and present for people of color. One question is, why is it so acceptable for there to be fear of black people? This makes no sense when the Federal Bureau of Prisons says there are less black inmates than others. To show this, there have been recent major court cases about the homicide of young black boys in which the defense of men who killed them was they had fear for losing their lives at the hands of thugs. My mom is glad she has five daughters. 
Why were black people treated so unfairly in the history of our country? It seems obvious that people who helped build this country deserved freedom and justice. In 1957, my grandmother took a day trip to downtown Orlando with her little girl. Debbie, only 18 months old, began to cry. Grandmother stopped at a restaurant counter for a burger, but the server told her she could not be served. Grandmother had missed the whites only sign. She begged. The server still said no. Then, a white woman got up from her table, walked to the counter, and ordered a burger from the server. What happened next melted my heart. She turned to my grandmother, handed her the burger, then said, no person should be hungry, especially a baby. This woman only saw the color of hunger that happens to all people. To her, the color of freedom and of what was just mattered. The colors of freedom and justice are the colors of the American flag since these are the ideas for which our country was established. The color red on the flag stands for war, blood, and courage. The blue represents the freedom and justice offered to all citizens. The white stands for the purity of the desire to ensure people have an opportunity to live their dreams. This very flag waves over all people of many shades of the color spectrum. We, the people, should address those questions. We should concern ourselves with the problems of others. We should expect the promises represented by our flag for all people without regard to skin color. When I grow up, I want to be a hematologist, a doctor who studies blood and blood diseases. And this little brown girl should be able to grow up and help children battling cancer. Do you see how these can affect many people's lives? I see clearly and it will never, ever leave my mind. Um, I'm going to read her bio and then I'm going to embellish because she said I could. Cassandra Lewis is an accomplished artist who rose to stardom and gained global recognition after delivering show-stopping, electrifying performances on season six of NBC's The Voice. Lewis's remarkable accomplishments include singing with Grammy and Oscar winner Peebo Bryson and Celine Dion. For 10 years, Cassandra was the featured performer in Cirque du Soleil's La Nuba. Her vocals are featured on many projects, including the Oscar-nominated documentary Sustaining Life where Sassandra was the narrator. Sassandra's unmistakable voice can be heard in commercials for Folgers Coffee, Sprite, Sears, and Arby's, to name a few. Her debut single, Shout, rose to number one on the Billboard Hot Dance charts. The mother of three is not slowing down. Sassandra uses her gift to impact the community. Her recently launched Sassandra Lewis Foundation is one of the ways the singer demonstrates her heart and passions for other. She is a proud Florida native who defied the odds when she dared to leave the life of a migrant worker in the groves and realized her dreams by unrelentingly pursuing her destiny. From grove to glam, not as ragged to embellish. All of us rocked the house on The Voice, did we not? Because we saw a hometown girl, woman, and as uh, Usher would say, that's a grown woman. Go there and show out and make this entire region proud of Sassandra Lewis. But she is truly one of the most down to earth, humble people that I've ever had the opportunity and pleasure to meet. I met her in the studio, y'all, and I ain't never been a groupie. But as she sang, I was a groupie that day. And you know what, but her spirit just allowing someone who she was just meeting for the first time to be able to sit down and share, and that's what she does. Because on The Voice, she unified a region, did she not? So if you stood and you voted on your television screen, here's your chance to stand in person and welcome Miss Sandra Lewis to this microphone. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much. Good morning, City of Okoe. How are you all doing today? 
What an exciting day this is. Thank you so much for inviting me and thank you so much for voting for me. But today is not about me, it is about a king. I am here to talk about our king, Dr. Martin Luther King. It is my honor and privilege to be here. Your generous and ongoing contribution to the community has and will continue to make an indelible impact on our society. I would like to take a moment to acknowledge everyone on the platform with me. It is indeed an honor to leave the groves and then be able to stand on a platform with such distinguished guests. In the 20th century, a king came on the scene to help rescue his people. We call him Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Like many forerunners, Moses led the children of Israel, Harriet Tubman led the slaves, and Dr. King led many marches to make his I Have a Dream speech a reality. All of us have dreams, and we all have our own meaning of a dream. In your own mind and thoughts, what is a dream? My personal definition of a dream is a wish. Sometimes that dream may be easily realized, it may be fragmented, or it may even be a nightmare. I am reminded of Langston Hughes' dream variation poem. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? Or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat? Or crust and sugar over like syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load. Or does it explode? As I reminisce about the life, legacy, and the actions of Dr. King, I am reminded of his incarcerations, beatings, and humiliation he suffered and endured. And with my sincere gratitude to Dr. King and others, I am able to stand where I am right now. Not only did he make significant changes and a difference for the lives of Blacks, but he also caused an awakening and awareness in the lives of whites. From going north to pick apples and cherries and returning south to pick oranges, I dreamed or wished that I could be something and do something different. Having been reared by parents who were God-fearing and God-rearing Christians, I found a joy and relief of expressing myself through songs at my small church in Lake Hamilton, Florida, and the church we'd attend after leaving the apple orchards in North Rose, New York. After reaching adulthood, I told my mother and father that I wanted to sing, but they really didn't want to hear that. They didn't want me to try my chords in other genres of music. However, perhaps with reluctance, I was so delighted that they gave me their blessings. So let me tell you a little bit about me, my dream from Dr. King's vision and where I am now. Of course, I am still dreaming, so we must not stop or give up on our direction in life. I started out as a migrant worker. Y'all know what that is? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. It wasn't a very glamorous life, but it was a real life and it kept food on our table and it kept a roof over our head and it kept our family very close and tight. It's not what did I want, where I want it to be or what I want it to do, but today I am very grateful to God for my childhood and for everything that my father did as a hardworking man to provide for his family of eight. I honestly didn't know that the fruit that we were harvesting was being served as delicious juice around the world until I got older. I dreamed of what seemed like an eternity, someday leaving that life of hard labor behind and going after my dream of becoming a rock star. 
I never allowed the fact that I was a young, nappy-headed, underprivileged, bullied, tall with big feet, the list goes on, daughter of a preacher man, to stop me from believing in my dream. I knew that education and my voice was a huge part of my plan to escape those groves. With the help of a few amazing people like yourselves, I fought for my high school diploma between all the migrating. I decided to chase my dream and that decision eventually has led me here to you today. I now stand before you to encourage you to pursue what you want in life with a relentless desire to live in that moment and know that you have arrived. When I auditioned for The Voice, season six, I was determined to prove that dreams did not have an expiration date. And it could, it could make it, I could make it so the next person would know that they could do it as well. If you are familiar with The Voice, you also know that one is forced to recognize the power of social media to this generation. Being a single mom of three kids, I've quickly learned and accepted that we are living in a hashtag world and therefore now I am a hashtag girl. You see, it's important for us to add friends and get as many likes to remain connected. Just as Facebook and Instagram cause you to stay in touch and check in every now and then, you should apply those principles to your own lives. Update your status so that you can stay the course. Check in, be present and active in school and life and in your community. Connect with family. Post your own life selfie to remind you of where you are headed. It is important to have a presence in the virtual world and even more important to show up, check in, and stay connected in the actual world. You have the power to shape the environment you live in. Your choices, decisions, and even your setbacks are all important. Set achievable goals for yourself. Although the voice competition is over for me, I still use my voice as a means to make the most of my life. What is your gift? What were you born to do? Identify that thing and hashtag work it. I would like to leave you with a few words of encouragement. I challenge you to put your all into this year, plus some. This is your dream, city of Okoe. The price has been paid for equality, and the dream that Dr. King dreamed is yours. Let us lift every voice and sing, and sing till earth and heaven rings. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. I dare you to fully occupy your space in society. I pledge with you to hashtag speak up. Hashtag celebrate, hashtag educate. Again, thank you so much for inviting me today. I am hashtag Grove to Glam, a beneficiary of Dr. King's dream. So she can sing and she can share, huh? See, what she did tell you when our families were migrating, because a lot of people say, well, who are these migrant workers? Uh, they didn't tell you that we that church piece was the most important piece. So I think she can preach a little bit too, right? Wow. So... For his remarks, his closing remarks, it's now time for our mayor to join us. Uh, this is just a great day. And oftentimes, uh, William Maxwell and I have looked off in the distance and there's been an eagle fly by. 
Well, Bill, he flew by doing Sassandra's speech. Right through there, just like he always does. Ain't God good. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the august pleasure of presenting our mayor of the city of McCoy. Please join me in welcoming my, my, our mayor, Scott Vandergrift. Good morning. Still morning, isn't it? That depends on when you get up. I want to welcome you to our great city, my hometown. I watched it transition and helped it to transition into an international community. We're very proud of it. I want to thank you for coming tonight. We have an overflow crowd of about five to 600 people. So count yourselves among this and, and blessed and everything. So I, again, I wasn't prepared and uh, I'm out of breath getting over here. All right, thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor. And for all the work that he does, and we get to see him around town, let's just give him another round of applause from our hearts, okay? As we get ready to draw to a close, I want to give some thank yous and some invitations to you. First, let's join me in thanking our keynote speaker, Ms. Sandra Lewis, again. The joint team that makes this possible, the City of Okoye Mayor and our commissioners. And though you see them, you heard their names, but they're everywhere. So the Human Relations Diversity Board members, let's just give them a rounding round of applause. From West Oaks Mall, Ms. Sandra French, who's the marketing manager. that immediately after the benediction, we invite you inside for the Motorcycle Expo and exhibit the first time ever at the West Oaks Mall. I want you to come on in and spend some time with us and some change. <laughs> we like green change. But we'd love to have you come inside and join in that. As you go inside, you're invited to have some great fun activities. Uh, there'll actually be a, um, a watching of uh, the Selma, the movie. If you haven't seen Selma, that movie is here. Um, come join in that as well. Also, the mall will be raffling off of motorcycles and uh, sponsoring a poker run and hosting safety workshops. And speaking of safety, I'd like to encourage you, as you leave here today, please be careful. Please obey the speed limits in the parking lot. Be careful as we travel around so that we have our little ones out here, the future. Let's be careful as we go to and fro and, and travel safely. I'd like to also thank the City of Ocoee staff, Mr. Al Butler, the Support Services Director, the Assistant Support Services Director, Doug Gaines, the Parks and Recreation Team led by Jeff Hayes, the police department led by Lieutenant Brad Drescher and Chief Charlie Brown. Our Koi Fire Department, who's on duty back there at the back of the park, a lot less wave at them. Our first responders, without you, we wouldn't feel the safety that we do. Our Public Works Department that makes all of this happen as well. Last but certainly not least, She's hiding somewhere, but let's thank Joy Wright from the city of Okoye. Joy does all the legwork and the logistical work for the parade. She does everything from sending out the news releases to ordering the porta potties, which are right there if you need them. Uh, she's also the reason why we have the honor of having the voices Sassandra Lewis, but we claim her at Central Florida as Sassandra Lewis as our keynote speaker. But let's just give Joy a, a round of applause because she keeps me together as well. As we come and we shared in song and in, in message, I just want to remind you that the city of Okoye has come a long way. When we think about Martin Luther King being a drum major and Lester Dabbs being his drum major, because how many of y'all know about FAMU and the Marching 100? 
Well, it takes five drum majors to keep them in line. How many of y'all know about the Wildcats? I want to be balanced. I don't want to get shot when I leave this podium. It takes a group of drum majors to keep them in line. And can you imagine where we would be had it not been for the incredible drum major, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., and Lester Dabbs not leading us forward as the city of Okoye. So as we close, my closing remarks to you is continue to carry it forward. The torch has been firmly passed, and as we run this relay race towards justice, equality, and coming together, there's a time and a charge on each and every one of us that you grab your brother's arm, that you grab your sister's hand, and that you run boldly into what's about to come. For if you blaze a pathway, little Isis, this little brown girl, has some things to change. Thank y'all so very much for allowing me to be the host as your master of ceremonies. And please join me in welcoming the Reverend back for our benediction. May we all stand for the benediction. Until the all wise God, majesty, power, glory, and honor, we give unto thee as we depart from this ceremony that thou hast ordained. We thank you, we love you. In Christ's name we pray, amen. amen. Can y'all sing with me, we should overcome? We shall overcome, we shall overcome, we shall overcome, some day, oh dear, grab the person's hand next to you. Let's raise them high in unity today. We shall over, we, we shall overcome someday. Leaving love, leaving peace. God bless you.